Good morning, everybody. Ed Talaskas here. Tuesday, the 18th of October. Markets are up a little bit. Let's see if they're going to hold their gains or if they're going to sell off, but um, we'll get more on that here in a little bit. All right. Hope everyone's doing well. All right, we've got our normal disclaimer out of the way. <clears throat> Rand Walk is not a broker and dealer nor investment advisor. This presentation is for educational purposes only. We don't know your situation and what level of risk is right for you. We're not making any specific trade recommendations. The risk of loss in trading options can be substantial, so please be aware of all your risks before hitting this then button on your keyboard. Um, actual P&L can vary and be affected by liquidity, commissions, and slippage. So I'm going to... Let's go ahead and so today we're just going to talk about basic uh, butterfly construction. So last um, last time we met, uh, we talked about uh, verticals and uh, combining them and uh, maybe doing um, condors. And uh, maybe we'll put one on uh, today um, uh, after we get through the uh, the basics of the butterfly. Uh, either we'll put on a, a butterfly or a condor, or maybe you know one of each, and uh, see what we can find. So butterflies are, are one of my favorite strategies, uh, mainly because they're they're pretty flexible they, and you know, they come in many types and flavors. And and generally, when the short strikes are shared in your verticals that you're either buying or selling, um, they're, they're, it's what they call them, um, a butterfly. Um, now butterflies also can be used to make adjustments, um, you know, either to take money out of a trade because you're selling a butterfly, or you can use to um, um, you can buy a butterfly to increase the profit area, or maybe take risk out of the trade. So that's you know kind of down the road, but um, by the that's what I mean by the flexibility because um, they're they're usually a very small amount as far as the the, the debit if you're going to buy a butterfly. Um, and some of the, the you know, next time I think we'll probably talk about uh, broken wings and um, uh, the cousins of the butterfly. And you know, many times we, if we put that on for a small credit, um, you know, we can take the risk outside the one standard deviation zone and um, have a pretty good uh, trade setup. But um, let's get through some of the basics here. So here's just a simple example of a long call spread combined with a short um, call spread to create a, a what they call a long call butterfly. So we got two. Let me get my tools out here. So the short legs that share common, and then that's usually going to be the point. And it's a better color. So we have a um, basically a long uh, call spread that we're paying some amount, small, some kind of small debit to it, and then we sell a call spread against it um, to bring in a credit. So we're paying some money here. For this long call spread, and then we're going to try to sell a call spread against it to pull in some. So when we sell a call spread, uh, we're collecting and pulling in um, um, a credit. And typically, you're going to find that you're going to be, you know, if this is, um, you know, we pay uh, four dollars for this long spread and we collect one dollar on the call side, uh, then what's going to then we're going to net three dollars. So if you're four dollars on the long call spread and you collect a buck. On the short call spread, you know you're you're in it for three bucks. And um, when we talk about broken wing butterflies and stuff next time, um, you know, we're trying to get that cost down to to you know essentially um, you know get it here to the zero line, and um, uh, so we're putting it on for a small credit or a small debit. But um, so that's just the basic um, uh, premise of that. So the other thing is, you know, looking at the max profit uh, versus the cost. Um, the the risk reward ratio you know if you if you got you know pay three bucks for it but you only make uh, let's say um, you know three dollars um, with this then you got a risk reward of you know one to one because I paid three dollars for the butterfly I can only make three dollars at the short strike at expiration uh, so that's a one to one risk reward I my preference is like you know three four even five uh, five to one uh, risk reward um, is what I like um, to, to, to kind of gear for when I'm looking at trades, but um, we'll go through that when we go through the um, 
we'll, we'll, we'll look at some sample trades or some demos. So here's um, uh, another example. This is a long put butterfly in Google. So I'm, you know, I'm long a put spread. So I'm long uh, the 800 uh, 775 uh, put spread. And then I'm selling the 775 750 put spread against it. And it's going to cost me $3. Um, and said so it cost me three dollars, and I can almost uh, make uh, 2,200. That's a little more than seven to one risk reward, and which we see here, it's 733 max uh, profit. So, and again, the, the plus or minus um, um, one standard deviation line is represented by this light pink area, and the darker purple is the plus or minus half standard deviation. So. Um, Sometimes I refer to the backyard as the the pink area, and then I refer to the back porch um, um, as the the lower part or, or the left hand side of the uh, the purple area, and the right hand side I call the front porch. Uh, sometimes just to some people you know, like some analogies, so that's what I'm uh, how I kind of term that. But um, so here's a butterfly we pay three bucks, and it's pretty much in the backyard and a little bit on the back porch. Um, and here, this is going out uh, using November options. So we got 32 days. So one of the things that we like to look at um, when we do butterflies is um, it, the further out in time that you you go out, you know, generally the, the cost of the butterfly is going to get cheaper. So if we went out 64 days, um, you know, it's not going to drop in half, but um, it'll be cheaper. But the downside is the amount of theta that you're receiving. So from a you know, Greek perspective. Oops. So it's four dollars and nine cents is with 32 days, and as you know, what we're trying to do with butterflies is we have twice as many options here of the short put. So the 775 put, um, we're short two of them, and by doing that, we're trying to take advantage of time decay, and ideally it, at expiration and we expire at 775, we get to collect the entire 1325. Um, but if we bought just a straight put, we would have had to pay you know $22 and change just for that 800 put. And um, it, like I said, we'll go through an example of kind of just building this step by step. And then we're selling the 750 put. I mean, we're buying the 750 put for 730. So. If we spend twenty-two, um, twenty-two dollars, and then we spend another seven bucks, it's uh, twenty-nine. We're paying twenty-nine fifty to buy um, the legs of the butterfly. So these two guys cost us roughly twenty-nine hundred bucks that we, that we you know, per contract. The thirteen twenty-five we're collecting as a premium, and since we're selling two of them, um, we get to collect twenty-six hundred bucks. So the twenty-nine hundred that we're spending for you know, buying the longs. And then we collect twenty-six hundred dollars uh, for selling the the, uh, the puts. That's how we get to the three hundred bucks. So, all right. So here's uh, sometimes you might hear the term, you know, and we talk about iron condor, um, but here sometimes you hear the term, you know, iron butterfly. Iron butterfly is termed any times that you're using a combination of calls and puts to build your butterfly. Um, and sometimes you know they don't have to be at the same strike. They might be, you know, five points apart, which we call kind of a, a split strike butterfly. But but here we're selling a call spread and selling a put spread, both um, almost out of the money here. Um, the call spread's a little bit um, in the money, so the underlying um, is right here, the blue line. And what we're doing here, a similar scenario, it is. Get here. So this call spread, so we're, we're buying, in this case, an in-the-money call and paying um, 16, uh, say 16, yeah, 16.90 for it, and then we're selling an 800 call, and it's at 29.30. So we collect some credit for selling that call spread, and likewise, we're selling an 800 uh, put for $22, and then we're buying the 775 put and spending $13. So we're collecting um, about $9 on the put spread that we're selling, and then we're getting about 11 bucks 
Um, 19, 13, 13, yeah, 13, 17, 17, 12, yeah, if I can add right, so 29 minus 17, 12. So we're getting about $12 um, that we're collecting there to get the credit. So in this case, we're collecting, um, you know, some credit. And you can see our theta is at $5.81. So every day that ticks by, we're collecting $5.81. And you know, this is pretty much you know, on the front and back porch, uh, just camping out uh, with 32 uh, days to expiration. So um, the max risk in this case is $365 because we're, we're doing almost what they call half the money um, butterfly essentially. And again, mainly when, when you're, when you're constructing a butterfly and you want the underlying to be under the tent, which is inside the butterfly, um, you want to collect that positive um, theta. So for every day that ticks by, we collect the 581 now. As each day progresses, the rate of which theta um, decays is going to accelerate and you're going to collect more uh, theta. So, you know, you're 591 or, you know, 611 and 612. So as each day gets closer to expiration, the theta will accelerate. But at the same time that your theta is going to increase, which, you know, as if you're selling options, you, you like that, um, your gamma risk is going to increase. Because, you know, if we're up in the tent here, let me just draw. So let's say we're, you know, two days out and you're sitting, you know, you're sitting right here at the peak. You're saying, hey, I'm up 1200 bucks. You know, your gamma is going to increase as well because if you get any kind of sudden movement in the underlying, your profit, you know, you're, it's like going on a roller coaster. So if you're on the roller coaster and you're at the top of that roller coaster, um, either way you go, if you go left or right, you're going to be accelerating in either to the, to the downside or, I mean, to the downside or to the upside. And when it accelerates, your P&L is going to go down the tube uh, with it because then you're going to see your, your, your profit, you're going to lose it because of the gamma. Yes, you got theta, but um, the range to make profit is going to get smaller and smaller. So. All right, so <clears throat> you can also go wider with the strike width, but it also increases the, the price of the butterfly, but it can also increase the probability. So in this case, we went uh, 75 or about 70 points um, on the legs of the butterfly. And you can see that the risk also ticked up. Um, so yes, you're collecting 42.65, but your risk also is going up uh, corresponding. But, you know, from a, you know, if you like the, the um, theta, you, you know, you're collecting $35 or almost and positive theta every day, which you like. Um, the butterfly is kind of camped out in the backyard, uh, the back porch and the front porch. Um, you have a higher probability, but you know the trade-off, um, as with any kind of type of trade, is you're trading risk versus reward. And you know, you know the, the the art of trading is trying to figure out a happy medium that you're comfortable with. Some people might be comfortable with this risk reward ratio. Um, if you're more aggressive, then you may, you know, place it a little bit outside so you can move this butterfly further out of the money um, to the left or the right. That'll help decrease the, the cost of the butterfly, but you're also changing your risk reward characteristics. So, Let's... all right. So some of the what I call best practices or guidelines is. And butterflies are generally going to be cheaper when the implied volatility is high. So, you know, many times when we're looking at uh, charts, and, and we'll, we'll look at some here, I'll ask you, you know, uh, you know, we'll look at some stocks that you guys want to look at. And, and one of the things that we always you know, look at, and also on the bull sessions, is I always look at the IV rank. And if that IV rank is, you know, in the uh, lower part of the range, you know, it's like you know, below 20%, you know, there's not a whole lot of juice in, in you know, selling uh, options and, and the cost of the butterflies um, can be more expensive because IV is lower. Now, if IV pops or you're, you're putting a, uh, a good example is, you know, if you, you put a butterfly on, you know, the day of earnings, you know, the IV rank is 
typically going to be in the upper range, and um, but you know it, it's 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 jacked up uh, in the upper range because it, it's expecting some kind of move from some 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 kind of market event, and in this case or this example you know, would be earnings, but. Um, um, but when you get a um, high IV rank, um, you generally um, could take advantage of what they call IV crush, and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But but generally, if you're looking for butterflies, you know I'd like to see it that implied volatility in, in the upper range it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can still do it when the IV or implied volatility is is low, but um, your risk reward is not going to be um, that great. Um, also, as I mentioned, butterflies um, can be cheaper when you go, you know, when you allow for more time to expiration. You know, generally I like between 21 and 30 days uh, versus, you know, 60 or 80 days. I mean, those are could be two entirely different types of trades. 21 to 30 days, you know, you know, options decay the most once they once they hit like the 30-day level, or as some people say the 45-day level. Um, you know, the theta starts to really come out uh, of the options. So if you're trying to sell options, you know, like even iron condors that we'll look at, you know, 45 days is is pretty much the upper window as far as what expiration I'm going to pick. Um, if you want to play a shorter term, once you get underneath 30 days. It starts picking up, and you know, that's what we want. We want um, the theta to start picking up, and we want the underline to be underneath the tent inside the butterfly, and um, and that way you're taking advantage of theta, and you can make you know you can make your you make your profit uh, quicker. Now, the 60 to 80 days, I would be interested in you know in, in a couple of different scenarios. One, if you know the VIX is you know, above 25 or something, um, and then if the um, um, if the IV rank is in the upper, uh, upper upper part of the range, because when you get a high IV, you know, let's say the VIX hits, you know, 27 or even let's say 30, when the VIX hits 30, which is almost 2x of where it is now, and you put a butterfly on, that butterfly will um, benefit two ways. Um, if VIX decides to come back from 30 to 25 or 15, you know, come back 50%. That change in implied volatility, which is uh, you know say 30, and we went to 15, is a 50% decrease. And butterflies generally are negative vega, and um, you're going to benefit from that. But you're also you know the theta is going to help you as you get closer and closer um, to expiration. And generally, butterflies will be cheaper when you go further out of the money. So. Um, you know, when we just do broken wing butterflies, sometimes we'll, um, you know, set them on the on the outside fence of the minus or plus one standard deviation line, and um, you construct a butterfly that just kind of camps out there. And when the underline you know makes a move, you know, being you know random walk theorist, you know, we don't try to predict which way the market's going to go. But if you got one on each side, you really don't care. But if those butterflies you can put on for a small credit, um, then then all the better. Um, and then point number four, the butterflies will be more expensive the wider the strike separation. So generally, like I said, when the when the VIX is low, and I would kind of say 15 is you know getting toward the bottom, or even the 10. Generally, I like to do those. The butterflies will be skinnier. You know, they're I'm not going to have a whole lot of strike width. Um, uh, between the, the verticals that I'm using to construct the butterfly, um, when the volatility is higher, um, and, the, and the same thing, let's say the VIX is at 30, then then I'm going to go wider on the legs because if I go wider on the legs, I'm getting more juice for selling those particular options. But also when the crush happens, I can benefit more because I got more negative vega, get the vol crush, and then um, it'll also be um, uh, cheaper. So. So when you're when the IV's uh, kind of low, you're gonna have skinny butterflies, and then when you get bigger, you're gonna have wide, fat butterflies. Um, we had some, you know, some some wide um, wide swings in, in the VIX. So so let's uh, examples here. All right. All right, so you guys, um, you guys want to look at a particular stock, or how are we going? We'll start. We start with the SPX, and since we've been talking about the VIX, I 
Okay, so we got a, a weekly chart of the, of the SPX, and then we got the daily. The IV rank is going to be different because um, we're looking at different time periods. So we got a 27 rank on the weekly chart. Daily, we're at 31%. Um, so kind of lower range, but um, yeah, 31% is better than you know 10, 12% that we've had here in the um, um, <laughs> last couple of months. But um, it's it's come back a little bit. So let's. Um, All right, so let's say and we'll look at some November eighteenth options here. And then say that, um, let's just say, okay, we're, SPX is at 2140. And let's say that you're bearish. And, and you say, okay, I'm bearish on the market. Um, so you could buy, you know, let's say, we'll buy a 30, 30 delta put. Yeah, let's go to this graph. So obviously, if you're super bearish, yeah, let's do one contract. You can say, okay, it looks good, and then you know, if the market moves in my direction, you know, I get to make you know, a bunch of money because I'm, I'm making you know thirty dollars for every one dollar point move to the downside. Um, you got a huge positive Vega, so as you move to the downside, um, each one dollar increase in Vega. Um, is also going to help your position, but it's going to cost you two thousand and thirty bucks. Um, so as we talked about uh, last time, is you know we can sell um, something against it and to create a vertical. And let's do put both accommodations. I'm just going to separate things so we can see the cost. I'm going to do the same thing here. And you're going to say, hey, I just don't want to pay 2000 bucks for one put. That's just, just you know, it's a lot of money, you know, it's like, which I get. And uh, let's do one. All right, so by selling, you know, I'm just going out 20 points and selling the 2070 put spread. I mean, to put, I collect almost 1500 bucks. So now, you know, if you subtract those two, it's going to cost you $420 versus just going, you know, 2030 bucks coming out of your pocket. So it's a little bit cheaper on, 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 the, on the pocketbook. Um, but you say, oh, you know, $4.20, that's, that's a lot of money. Is there another way that I can get the cost down? And, and that's what we'd start doing. We can sell a, a put vertical against this to get the cost down. Now by every time that we sell, you know, what's the downside? So let's, uh, let's do that real quick. So by selling that extra uh, put, that 270 put, that kind of caps the downside risk. Uh, but it also helps protect you from a Vega perspective uh, to some extent. And what I mean by Vega is, you know, um, if Vega uh, continues to decrease, you know, it goes against you. Obviously, delta is going to hurt you, but if the vol drops, you know, if we're at, and, and we go back to 15, you know, you're going to feel the pain because you know you're you're going to lose $219 for every $1 uh, drop in Vega. So by selling that 2070, we kind of reduce the impact of Vega in the trade. So that's why. Um, there's like trading verticals because it makes it um, a little bit, um, um, I say, I don't say immune, but it, it gives you a little bit of protection uh, from a Vega impact. Um, so now, let me just take these guys off. So for that same position that we paid 424, and I'm going to sell, um, sell the 2070. Do 
50. So now, just like we did with the straight puts, and I sold a, a uh, 2070 put to get the cost down to $4.25. Now I'm going to sell, oops, not that many. I'm going to sell a 2070 2050 put spread for $3.30. So now I got a simple put and butterfly, and my risk is $95. So we went from 2,000, know, roughly to 400 bucks, down to almost 100 dollars. Um, and if I do that, I simulate that. Take these off. So this is just um, this butterfly is 90 cents. It's 4.25 minus 3.30 gives us 90 cents. So um, again, with you know the trade-off is that you know, now that we got a butterfly, our profit is restricted to just what's underneath the butterfly. So if it continues to go down, then you can lose the entire uh, debit because we pay if we're paying 90 cents for this butterfly, that's the most that we can lose on the trade. But if it gets underneath the tent. Um, we can get you know to make almost 1900 bucks so um, so that's that's what I like the butterfly the, the you know the $64,000 question is um, to get the underline to sit underneath the, the tent at expiration so that's why it's cheap because you know, the probability of getting in there uh, can be small so let me open this up so what I just did is change the date to match the expiration that we're looking at so this flies in the backyard so to speak um, so that's a you know what they call a simple um, butterfly this is a simple straight long put uh, butterfly um, sometimes people may want to do um, what they call an iron fly so we can do something similar to that so we can say I want to sell sell a vertical Sell a vertical. So we're going to combine these first. Twenty ninety. We got ten twenty points. Ninety. So here we're collecting fourteen eighty five and four dollars and ten cents, but the spread that we're selling this in the money this is an in the money call spread because the underline's at twenty one thirty three. So we're in, you know if it expires you you got an in the money spread. So um, generally, if you want to you know people that sell uh, irons will want to sell it at the money because you're selling. Um, you know the intrinsic value, so that's always a good thing is to um, get to. Or I mean, I'm saying you're selling the extrinsic value in, in those options, um, and you want to buy in, intrinsic value. So here we collect the a credit, but it's just a similar trade of the of the uh, put fly. Uh, where did, that's no, we got different strikes here. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. So I would need to do 70, 90. And then on the put side, there we go. Yeah, so this is the equivalent iron fly. So you get to collect 18, almost 19 dollars. Um, you collect 19 dollars in credit. And the you know the max risk is you know that ninety cent difference. So slightly you're, you're selling in the money spreads. Um, I'm not a big fan of selling deep in the money because the bid ask spreads get to be really um, uh, uh, 
kind of sometimes get hard to get out of. Um, so I try to, you know, if I'm going to build it and have everything and you know on all calls or all puts, irons typically do at the money uh, to benefit from the um, you know sell many the intrinsic value of of the options. So so that's just a simple iron fly. And then if we did the same thing. Oops. So, so there's not an iron butterfly option from Think or Swim. You can just do iron condor and then change your strikes to match. Oops. So this is the 1910 credit. So I'm just combining both two spreads into one, you know, butterfly. So you can put this on as a single order. Let me turn this guy off. So I'm just combining these strikes into one, one order. So, so that's just a simple butterfly there. So, and stocks you guys want to look at is you want to look at Facebook. Okay. So Facebook announced earnings in a, a couple of weeks. Got a high off of here. Got support fifty day. Um, so being bullish. Yeah, bullish. Okay. Uh, 28. All right, let's see if we can find. Twenty-one. So the other thing. <clears throat> so with this, let me go back to charts here. So we're two weeks until earnings, and and generally. Is going to increase as we get toward earnings, so that's why we're seeing, you know, the, the implied volatility kind of ramp up here at 48 percent. But when you look at the option chain, um, you can see that the highest implied volatility is using these November 4th options. It's at 35.7, so that's a pretty good indication that uh, earnings is coming and it's a plus or minus uh, eight dollar move. Um, so we can either play something earlier, which would be a short term. Um, short-term butterfly. If we go past earnings, um, we have the risk of you know, going through the butterfly. So maybe um, as much as I'd like to play the longer term, let's do a shorter term one. It's October 28th. And we'll just do a simple call butterfly since we're bullish. Twenty-eight. So the back of the yard, or back of the, or the edge of the front yard, I should say, is at sixteen delta. It's at thirty-three. So let's look at that. And let's see, we got five points. Thirty-eight. All right, so here it's a buck sixty-six on a butterfly, so we can lose a dollar sixty-six on this trade. Let's change this to the twenty-eighth. And let's see here, thirty-three. Yeah. So we can, you know, buck sixty-seven that we can lose, but we want the underline to kind of move in our direction. So this is five points wide. So so 128 to 133, the 133 to 1, 138. So $5 on each side. So if you wanted to make it cheaper, um, just do a couple of variants here. As we can pull um, the width of this butterfly closer. So we'll just move it in, let's say a couple points on each side. So it'll be a three points on each side versus the five. So you notice that saves us a dollar right out, right out of the chute, but it makes the profit zone smaller. But we get to save uh, the dollar. 
Um, but you say, oh, yeah, I want, I want the wider uh, profit zone. It's like, okay. Well, the other option that we can do is we can move this entire butterfly and maybe put the short strike uh, maybe at 135. So we're going to move it further out of the money. So let's look at the impact of moving it further out of the money. And we'll go two points on each of these. And you can see it's the same with butterfly. It's a dollar four versus a dollar sixty-nine. Um, and again, you, you're spending almost you know, one dollar uh, to make almost four dollars. So it's almost a four-to-one risk reward. So if we can lose a hundred bucks, but we can make four hundred, uh, the risk reward is four hundred over one hundred, four to one. Almost, you know, um, I mean, decent type of trade. Um, so that's. Uh, one way, and again, we can also combine it and say, you know, let's make the um, let's make the width um, a little bit skinnier. So we'll just do that one more time. So now we're at 36 cents. So by moving it further on the money and making the leg skinnier, we get the cost down to 35 cents. So we can lose 35 cents, but we can make uh, up to 260, uh, which is almost eight to one. Um, so that that ratio, and, and every trader is different. I mean, there's no you know, right or wrong for your butterfly selection. Um, you know, how much do you want to risk, and you know, it, how far is it going to be as far as your profit area? Um, generally, and, and this is a loose guideline, I like looking at the 30 delta option for my long leg. This is a general um, rule of thumb, so probably the 131, it's sitting there at 31 delta. Um, that's the sweet spot on your delta curve. So when you look at your deltas, you know, 16 is kind of the edge of the backyard uh, or front yard, and then, you know, the 30 delta is you're right at the sweet spot of your deltas. Um, so it is the underlying moves in your direction. Um, you're right at the sweet spot on the S curve uh, because gamma is going to start kicking in um, with it. So, um, so we did 31. Then we did one. Yep. So I might do 31. So here, you're, you know, 65 cents. I moved this the width in just one. So similar to what we did before, but um, spend 64 cents, and we can make almost 300. So that's that five to one. So that four to five to one, I mean, the four to one or you know five to one is is kind of where I like to you know start looking at it and it is what I consider maybe a D butterfly to start with. Um, if you're, if you're playing direction, if you're doing directional type butterfly. So, because um, you put it on for 65 cents and it, you know, Netflix decides to rally to 135, we get to, you know, you know collect the $100 um, you know, right off the bat. So we can almost, you know, with the doubling to make 65 bucks, um, we really need to hit 131.93 to hit 65 bucks. So that'd be, if you're trying to like double your money, um, that would be your percent to double. Um, but if you want to continue to play in and uh, play theta, because once you get underneath the tent, you, the theta is going to get um, positive. So let me move this guy. Um, show you something here. So, so looking at you know, the price slices here, um, so we're sitting at positive 19 delta. So every one dollar move, we make 19 bucks. Gamma is positive, so if we add that, it's going to help increase the profit which it's doing. Now as, as long as we're outside the butterfly your theta, your theta is going to be negative. Once you get inside the, the butterfly you notice this price slice I got here at 134.95 theta is positive so it's instead of losing three dollars and eight cents because sitting outside the butterfly you're going to slowly drift and, and lose your entire $65 at expiration. But as we move in the butterfly, you actually benefit from the theta and it starts getting closer to your short strike. So a couple of different ways to play it. And then you also notice that your vega um, is, is switching directions on you too. So you go from a positive three vega 
to a negative uh, 5.8. So what happens is the underlying moves to the upside. Generally, IV will shrink, and if it shrinks, that's good because your butterfly is structured that you're going to be benefiting. Um, you're going to for every one dollar. A decrease in applied volatility, um, you're going to make money and it's going to move underneath the tent. So let's, oops. I'll do minus 5%. So all I did here was I just do a 5% decrease. And you notice my profit jumped immediately. To 137. And the reason it did that is because of that Vega effect. So by playing with your vol adjust, you can see the impact. Let's do slowly so I can see. So you can see that kind of slowly keeps saying we get a almost 8% decrease in implied volatility. Um, it helps the position, but at the same time, if it you know implied volatility does increase, you know, that can that can hurt you. So so here's. And with a 5% increase in implied volatility, instead of collecting $100, we only get to collect $76. So it can go against you either way. So what you're trying to do is to structure, if you're picking underlines that are in the, in the upper part of their IV rank and the, the upper part of their range for implied volatility, and you want to take advantage of, you think implied volatility is going to go back down, then you know Butterfly would be a, a good um, candidate to, to benefit from that um, IV crush, as they call it, and an IV crush is when it's at a higher level and goes to a lower level. So just like the VIX is, it was at 30, it goes to 50. That's a 50% decrease in implied volatility. Um, all righty, so. So, so we can put um, we can put this on as a trade. And we'll have that being our first classroom trade. And let's see, 35. We're looking at this one. Facebook must have moved up. Yeah, I guess made up a little bit. So what do you guys want to do? You guys want to do the um, 36 cent butterfly? Or do you want to do the 66 cent butterfly? Leave it up to you guys. And then, we'll, like I said, well, next time we'll meet, we'll kind of we'll kind of track it and see how it kind of panned out. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's do. Um, we'll do ten contracts. That's what. Three hundred sixty bucks. And then we can see if we can get filled for May thirty-five. So we can risk three fifty to make twenty-six hundred. And it's a short-term trade. It's twenty-eight days. So it's you know, almost ten days. So. So we'll have our first trade on. Um, okay. All right. Uh, let's get back to our presentation. Going to get things wrapped up. Any questions on butterflies in general? How do you find good butterfly candidates? Um, one of the things in options analysis um, is on these searchers, and um, I'll just, um, just pick the simple butterfly here. So you can pick um, 
your favorite stock, the stock lists um, have some pre pre built and using the expensive IV stocks are going to find stocks that are in the high IV range and then you can say you want to look at some um, out of the money put butterflies and it show here and they can say um, I'm going to say up or down and let's pick the naturals search so this expensive IV stock list options analysis automatically refreshes that. And then you can look at uh, see to find some candidates that you might be interested in. So uh, there's Bristol Myers, Celgene, Netties. Uh, here's one ISRG. All right, so remember we talked about really skinny butterflies. This is pretty skinny. This is what five points. So you can see for you know 15 cents, that's a pretty skinny butterfly. Um, so yes, it's right on the back porch, but you know that window or you know for profitability uh, is pretty tight. Um, earnings is in 90 days. But it can give you ideas to say, okay, if you like the stock because it's in a high IV environment, let's say, let's say ISRG, we can rerun it and say, I want to look at just ISRG and give me some other uh, butterflies to pick from. And now I can say, you know, again, I'm looking at the max profit divided by max loss. Um, to get a rough idea, again, this is looks like it's a five point wide, but there's a ten point wide. Okay, let's pick this one. And, and it's always like a, a starting point. You know, sometimes option analysis will give you a good one, but I always like to take it and, and um, think or swim, uh, play with the legs. You know, maybe wide them out, um, or we can just go in here. We can edit these and. Let me move it out a little bit. Let's do edit. And then we can look at our chart. Let's look at SRG. Oops. Yeah, 55% IV rank. Yeah, that would qualify. And, you know, looking at this, you know, let's look at it's been going sideways uh, since. September 22nd. Um, so with sideways action, you know, from you know earlier today, we can say, hey, we want to maybe just look at uh, doing an iron uh, at the money uh, butterfly. So that's we can uh, let's just go straight and think or swim. And we'll pick just a regular November. Change the backyard. And if we did, um, you know, let's see, there's 18th. But we're seeing I'm at 720. Pretty solid, so we can center it at 720. And then I was going to go out 10 points and just tweak it from there. And then the put side. So that's uh, risking buck forty to make eight sixty. So the stays in the middle then we get to collect the 860 um, but again this is kind of narrow um, so risk reward wise and you know, we can
pull it out a little bit further. Um, let's go another 10 points, see what that does. Okay, so here we're collecting um, $17.20, and we, max uh, risk is uh, to $80, um, but ISRG has to stay uh, within the, uh, the boundary. So we can do something like this. Let's see if we can get and we'll put this one on and we'll, we'll have this be our second trade. So we've got two different butterflies that we'll track. And we'll see how they do um, next time. So, Okay. All right. So, um, so the homework I'm going to give you guys. And um, uh, using Apple, you know, find an iron butterfly. Uh, with a minimum of four to one risk reward uh, between 30 and 45 days to expiration, and uh, take a screenshot, email it to me. Um, I'll give you my two cents and um, you know, just put in there some of your logic, uh, what you think the, the underlying is doing, um, your rear prognosis, and that is give me a frame of mind because we all look at charts differently. So, uh, so that would be your homework assignment. Good practice with the butterflies. And next time, we're going to talk about the butterfly cousins, so the broken wing uh, butterfly, and uh, how we use this. Uh, so that'll be our next topic um, on the first um, Tuesday of the month. So, alrighty, if there's no other questions, I'll let you guys go. Otherwise, um, I'll be back at 2 o'clock for the bull session. So, we'll see you guys in a little while.